you can have a million negative thoughts and at the end of the day you're still an heir to the kingdom of God the Father. So trust in that. Hi everyone, my name is Adam Cross and I'm an Associate Marriage and Family Therapist in Southern California and I'm also a youth minister. And today I want to talk to you about your thoughts and how you are not defined by them. In therapy um, and youth ministry, I see a lot of people sometimes identifying with their thoughts. And what this looks like is I, I work a lot with teenagers, young adults, and uh, couples as well. Um, and sometimes people have a thought, right? They'll, they'll get angry at their spouse and they'll think, wow, I'm being hateful towards them. Um, or I find, I find this, I thought of this girl, you know, who's really attractive um, and I'm lusting after them. Now, m most people might not have that uh, confusion, but sometimes we can. And I've seen that it, it is kind of common for people to think, if I have a bad thought, then that must mean I am fill in the blank, right? Um, if I'm angry at somebody, then I'm not, I'm not being forgiving. If, you know, if I have an attraction, I'm, I must be lustful. There is a difference that we as human beings have thousands of thoughts whizzing through our head every single day. Some of them we're conscious of and we're contemplating things and other times we're not conscious of them. Um, you know, we think about food without even noticing, or um, we have different priorities on our mind that we set forth, and we're not conscious of these things. But I bring this up because I see a lot of young people, especially, um, who, if they, you know, have a thought, they think that they are that thought. Um, that's not the case. And I think one of the easy, easiest examples that I'd like to talk about is is anger really is that you know there is unjustified anger and then there is justified anger and for justified anger we can really look at um to scripture we can look to the gospels and that jesus you remember he's in the temples and um they were selling things in the temple right they're trying to make money and it was this marketplace and jesus flips tables and he's angry and he's you know, whipping, and um, it's this very kind of violent image. But there is an injustice being done. And in some ways, God is giving us permission to be angry with injustice. Anger is a part of our humanity, and we can't pretend that it's not there. So if we have angry thoughts, that does not mean that we're necessarily hateful. It does not mean that we're necessarily revengeful. But we need to allow ourselves to be angry for a few reasons, and, and this is it, is that if we ignore our anger, then we don't process it, and then we don't heal it, and then we really can't forgive, right? Anger isn't the same thing as, as hate hating. Anger isn't the same thing as being hateful, and that's one of those thoughts that's easily confused. You need to process the anger so you can heal, so you can forgive, and there's gonna be clear, healthy ways to do that. And maybe that was a different video, right? Like writing letters you don't give to people, journaling, um, having, you know, a spiritual director, going to therapy, talking about the anger, right? Those are healthy ways to deal with the anger. Um, and same thing with, with lust. And I work a lot with, with young men who really struggle with this. And sometimes we can think like, well, if I have a thought pop into my head, I'm being lustful. It's like, no, <laughs> we live in modern day society where you see billboards alone that could cause a thought train. But if a thought pops into your head alone, that doesn't mean, that doesn't define you, right? As instantly lustful, right? It's, it's a part of the world we live in, unfortunately, that we can see things that, that can cause images uh, to form in our minds. But the part that we have to work on is being able to say no to give that up to God, whether it's like a sexual thought that we don't want or, or an angry thought that we don't want, any type of intrusive thought, any thought we don't want, we can simply just take a second and say, God, I offer this up to you. God, I don't even want this thought. I, God, I, I don't wanna be thinking about these things. And then what we've done there is where that thought was, we've now not only said, 
God, I don't want it, but we've replaced it with God. And you can pray or you could do something else in that space. And even if you're saying, God, I don't want this thought 5,000 times, <laughs> you're really struggling with a certain thought, right? Um, God is going to take that thought. God is going to work with you in that um, because you are not your thoughts. You are not your angry thoughts, right? But you are required to look at them and process them. So if you're having angry thoughts all the time and you just give them to God, right, and you never deal with it, they're not going to go away. But give them to God and then also ask yourself, okay, why am I so angry? What steps do I need to take to not be so angry, to, to take steps towards healing? Again, if you're having lustful thoughts all the time, are you having all these these sexually explicit images pop into your head, you can give them to God. And then you also have to ask, okay, why does this keep happening? Right? Am I watching things on the internet, on TV, whatever it may be, that make it easier for me to have lustful thoughts, right? That make it easier for me to be led into lustful thoughts. Like, why is it so easy for my mind to just pop into that? Um, and again, talk these things out. You're not alone. Talk about this with your priest. If you have any questions about what is, what do I need to go to confession for and what do I not need to confess, um, consult with your priest. Find a good spiritual director. Go to see a good therapist. And you can help sort through all these things. But our thoughts are natural. Things will pop into our head. Right? That doesn't define us. Because the only thing that defines us is that we are a son or a daughter of God. That's it. You can have a million negative thoughts, and at the end of the day, you're still an heir to the kingdom of God the Father. So trust in that. Trust in that, and don't beat yourself up. You know, give the thought to God, and also do the steps and the work to process it, to make sense of those thoughts. And that's how we grow. That's how we become more fulfilled. I'm always having angry thoughts. I'm always giving them to God. Why am I so angry? What can I do to pursue that healing that Christ is calling me to? Right? I'm always struggling with lustful thoughts. Okay, what do you need to do to understand God's view and plan for love in your life? Right? For healthy living, for coping, for all these different things. So, don't get sucked into your negative thoughts. Don't think... Anytime you have a negative thought, that that defines you. It doesn't. If you have questions, if there's confusion of you know, what you're choosing and, and what you're not, um, talk to a therapist. Talk to your priest. Because you're not your thoughts. You're in control of your thoughts, but you're not defined by them. You have the ability to seriously look at your thoughts and to stop and to replace them and to start living a better life. And God is so wanting to work in your mind to ease those anxieties and ease those negative thoughts. So turn to him, give your thoughts to God, do the work that you need to do, look at maybe what's underneath the surface that's, that's coming up for you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below, um, share this video, like it, Check out my website if you want to shoot me an email or have any other uh, questions for me. And thank you for watching. God bless.